Thou shalt not suffer heretic in thy forge, for rust begets rust. Pascal Hanneman, in the name of the Adeptus Mechanicus, you are under arrest. Wait, what? All right, let's let us let us try to get to the capital. Because that's ultimately what I want. I want to go to the capital. Oh, this is an uncharted system. Mudo. I want to go to the capital. Oh, sidetrack. <gasps> what is this? Explorator Void Station. Prisoners of Ice. A strange and frightening discovery has made was made at one of the sites on this frozen world. Countless human bodies suspended in the clear ice of a glacier. The bodies showed no signs of in of injury. It was as if they dived into liquid water the moment before it turned to solid ice, freezing them in place with their eyes wide open and their hair fanning out behind them. Searchers uncovered nothing that could explain this mystery. Huh. It's just freaking cold. I feel like this is... Uh, and we're, we're, we are gonna go. Oh, she just remembered. You have enough. Choose a component. No, I'm not gonna downgrade. We're fine. Fine, We're, we don't need to. When the rogue trader ship approaches the Adeptus Mechanicus void station, it is met with the hostile, hostile scrutiny of the station's defense lasers. An explorer, Lexi Mechanic, who introduces himself as Service Unit 42, dispassionately inquires how the station can be of use to the rogue trader. Um, give the Transurian elements to the Adeptus Mechanicus. The station thanks the Rotator for her cooperation and remunerates her with gold and securities. Other than fuel. Pros to trade a resource from the Explorators. Upon consult data from the station's main cogs and gain Lex Mechanic Service Unit 42 confirms the station requires rare Transurian elements or natural gas for research of undisclosed nature. For its part, the station cannot offer the rogue trader anything in exchange at the moment, but the Adeptus Mechanicus representative of Footfall will certainly pay her. Okay. 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 That, I was expecting, like, full-on exploration and going insane. <laughs> right. No, that's where I'm supposed to be going. Well, we're, we're getting there. Lord Captain, I has, hasten to report the disturbing news brought to me by the machine spirits of the ship. The matter is extremely delicate and concerns Lady Cassia. You see, since her first day aboard, her presence has been a disturbance to the crew's way of life. If you will allow, I have prepared a detailed report. Oh, delivery report. The first incident occurred immediately after our departure from Yurik 5. The Lady Navigator chastised one of the ship's runners, after which he went to his living quarters, killed his family, and then shot himself. The second incident was noted while traversing the warp. The Lady Navigator gave the pilots the wrong instructions, and the void ship was thrown off course for a matter of minutes. But this was not enough. This, But this was enough for the forces 
of the Imperium imper the Martin's angered machine spir spirits enough for them to start the fire in a service bay. After that, officers living near the Lady Lap Navigator's quarters began to express extreme emotions. Hysteria, apathy, euphoria, rage. This is quite detrimental to crew's morale and performance. The last incident was recorded on Footfall. Around 100 living birds were delivered on board during our stay on Footfall. Each bird cost a hefty sum, but I have failed to discover their purpose and subsequent fate. I was also told about a conflict between the Lady Navigator and the Seneschal. Last with no details. If you like, you can ask Master West were Syrian directly. I think I will. Things are even worse with Jehadari. I intercepted a box cast in which she promised she would, and I quote, end that Kasha if she ever saw her again. If I may, Lord Captain, the Lady Navigator's state of mind worries me. She is self-contained and does not mesh with the crew at all, which is why everyone avoids her. Even senior officers can be superstitious. I fear that only you are in a position to talk to her on an equal footing and improve this situation for the sake of the crew's safety and that of Lady Cassia herself. Well, oof. Let's 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 yeah. Let's go. Let's go find our Lady Navigator before she I don't know starts some sort of freaking mutiny. I'm interested about the birds. Like, why was there so many birds? What's with the birds? Right. Seneschal first. Abelard. Lord Captain. Uh, I hear you and Cassie exchange words recently. What happened? And who brought this piece of news to you, I wonder? <sighs> then again, I have nothing to hide from you. Of late, the helmsmen have been going off course with increasing frequency, and the reports are full of contradicting accounts. The problem continued, even after several demotions were handed out, so I took it upon myself to investigate. I was astonished to learn that our lady navigator has been amending entries in the ship's log. And the officers have been keeping silent on her orders. I immediately demanded an end to the outrageous conduct, and I reprimanded Lady Cassia in front of the officers. She greeted my words with silence, and then quickly departed. <sighs> I should not have acted thus. I never even found out what drove her to do it. Hmm. Okay. Lord Captain. Well, we, we, we should find out. my quarters. Where is she? She's at the front. <laughs> Words cannot describe how boring the bridge is without our stimulating conversations. I have heard rumors that you are not getting along well with the crew. Panic flashes in her ruby red eyes and your heart starts beating a little faster while your hands go cold. Not here. I'm begging you. Aren't noblemen supposed to discuss such things away from the servants? Well, let us go to the study. No one will disturb us here. Then lead the way and I will answer all of your questions. I really wish we had the charm to stop her from, you know, making us feel emotions like that. What is it you wanted to talk about, Lord Captain? I have nothing to say to your unfounded accusations about my conflicts with the crew. I cannot recall my having a single quarrel with any of your people during my entire time aboard. During the warp voyage, you gave the wrong orders, which led to the vessel shifting off course and the service bay being destroyed. I saw something in the warp. Something vast. Predatory. Shimmering with indescribable colours. It came from no one and stared at the ship with hundreds of hungry eyes right there in our path. I decided to change the course while it was still possible, but did not want to show so panic. Would it have been better to tell the crew we were heading straight into a monster's gaping maw? Well, you've also been willfully changing entries in the ship's logbooks and forbidding officers from reporting it to Abelard. 
Oh, I beg to differ. I read numerous books on the Ashton Nartaris and can swear on how Soselli is honoured that your officers are entering data in complete contravention of regulation. False terms, random distance between lines, spelling mistakes in even the simplest of words. I have spent the last few cycles correcting the latest log entries and I thought it would please Master Abelard as he is so fond of order. And yet the Seneschal did not appreciate my efforts and for some reason called them an outrage. Even though mere days before he had been swaddling me in warm yellow words. I noticed all your people do this when they are expressing sympathy. I merely wanted to repay the Seneschal with same courtesy. Perhaps he finds my friendliness, friendliness off-putting. And what of the messenger you rebuked butchered his own family and then killed himself? I haven't rebuked a single errand boy on the ship. Cassia ponders this for a moment. Ah, I think I remember. A kind young man with a shy smile and skillful fingers with too much rotten ochre on his shoulders. I grew tired of his disgusting colour and advised him to lighten his burden by casting the weight off his shoulders. He did not come the next day or ever again. Yeah, because he murdered his family and himself. <laughs> the officers were reluctant to be quartered next to your chambers because of the constant emotional outbursts it causes them. Some even maim themselves and others. I already told you I cannot control my abilities. What else do you want from me? Will I be assigned to a pariah chaperone or will you put me in the suppressing shackles? Do you mind telling me why you needed 100 species of bird and what did you use them for? Admittedly, I am at a loss to myself. The day we arrived in Footfall, I sent a request to the ship's quartermaster and asked him to get me a songbird, but he never asked for clarification. And shortly before I, we left, I had countless number of cages delivered to me, all wrapped in bright red panic with flickering tints of fear. There was a bird in every one. Okay. I was so excited I thought I would have a hundred friends instead of just one. They were squeaking so piteously I let the poor things out. I even fed them my breakfast and dinner, but the stupid birds would not stop chittering even after bedtime. They were dashing about the room, smacking me in the face with their wings and defecating. I became angry and suddenly they started pecking at each other's eyes and attacking me. Then I became afraid and they all fell over dead. I do not think I want to keep pets anymore. No, you're not allowed any more pets on the station, okay? Okay, I think I've heard enough. Will you share your thoughts with me? Hmm. You have a kind soul, but have difficulty reaching out to people. I could teach you the art of communication if you like. That would be wonderful. My education in New York 5 was cut short, but I had realized by then that the wisdom of books is a poor substitute of the wisdom of experience. Very well, since we're done with this misunderstanding, I would like to change the subject. It would only be fair for me to ask you a few questions now, wouldn't it? Cassia hesitates and continues in a less confident tone. Do not mistake me. I am not going to accuse you of anything. It's just that you are the most worthy inter interlocutor on the entire ship and you are also always so busy um what would you like to ask i read a treatise by piasis de mobius very recently who claimed that the subjects would never believe their new ruler was better than the old one unless the old one had been a tyrant no matter the circumstances the low-born rabble become deluded about their prospects and rebel in favor of their base desires what do you make of this um Yeah, I think I'm going to go for this one. Your interpretation of this classical text is not entirely correct. If the subjects have grown accustomed to the ruling house, all the sovereign must do is refrain from breaching long-standing traditions, adjust unwanted laws as gradually as you would shift the bed of a flooded river, and no one will ever take your power from you. Cassia thinks for a moment and then smiles. Indeed, I was not wrong about your merits or your ability to hold conversation. I hope my second question does not confound you either. According to the 20 tomes penned by the preacher Ostak Istefan, 
the forgotten. Mercy and cruelty go through the world hand in hand, but people flock only to one pan of, of the scales. Would you rather inspire fear in your followers or a magnam or be magnanimous and choose all? Hmm. I am not afraid of acquiring a reputation for ruthlessness. I would rather crush a rebellion than condone one in that not the greater mercy in the end. There is so much power in your words, power that makes me want to join you. I understand now why your subjects are eager to follow you. I admit I was afraid we were too different, and yet you helped me realise that I can be candid with you. Please do continue. I must confess that sometimes I can hardly bear the burden of the house has placed upon me. I feel I am not doing my best. Tell me how you... Heir to the protectorate can better respond to your billions of lives day after day and not stoop under all the weight. Uh. It is not always easy, but I try to lead the dynasty towards prosperity by a worthy means. Thank you for your patience, Titan Von Shire. You are helping me to see the world in different colours. A novel experience for me. Our conversations hold a special place in my heart. Allow me to bid you farewell for now. I am heading back to my chambers to consider today's conversation. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, no one, no, no one she shouts at will murder themselves. Hopefully. Because that would suck. This is where I want to go, yes, yes. Lord Captain, I bring dire news. A feud has broken out between the clans that retain the Void Shield arrays. Rumour has it that the late Lady Theodora was seen on the lower decks, and so one of the families called for a rebellion against the usurper of the Void Ship. That is you. So far, no one believes their mad tales, but unrest has begun on the fringes of compartments. The ships and forces are ready to eliminate the instigating clan or pacify the entire Void Shield crew. Your decision is yours. Okay, what's the story about Lady Theodora? Rumours of Lady Theodora's presence on the Void Ship has been circulating for a long time and appeared to be a deliberate provoca provocation rather than ordinary drunken ramblings. Perhaps someone is intentionally stirring up the masses to rebel against you, or... Perhaps it is the influence of the warp. Enforcers are already investigating, but right now we need to stop the conflict from escalating any further. And as for the unrest continues, the void ship shields will not be operating at full capacity. Hmm. That's by the entire void shield crew. Those who succumb to the provocations of the unruly are no less guilty. I see to it, Lord Captain. Let's just nail that one on the head. I'm sorry, let's just go. Nope, nope. <laughs> no, believing, believing, she died, okay? She died. Lord Captain, Master Helmsman on the line. I can report that the quest for the capital world of the Von Valenti dynasty is finally at an end. Dargonus is straight ahead. We have received countless greetings. Your subjects would like to know when their mistress will be arriving. The merchant captains taken refuge in the orbital docks of Dargonus race to send you priceless welcoming gifts, hoping to buy you favor and to make an impression on the rogue trader. Tell Dargonus the rogue trader is coming home. It will be done, Lord Captain. After connection to the Master Helmsman is cut, the device crackles with Henry's voice. Lord Captain, I will be pleased to accompany you to you during a visit to Dargonus, so I can personally introduce Achilles Scalander, a servant on the Golden Throne who previously attended Lady Theodora and Dargonus. I'm counting on your benevolence. The box cast ends with a click. Okay. I still want to scan everything though. Do 
you would think she would have things in her world, you know, around her world. Let us. Oh wait, there's a Adeptus Mechanicus ship there. Lord Captain, a transport shuttle bearing the markings of the Adeptus Mechanicus is approaching the ship. The Margos Tarzus delegation tends to board our ship and gain an audience with your ladyship. This is exactly how they phrased it. He intends, not humbly requests. Many of my tech comrades neglect diplomacy when interacting with the lady. It is regrettable. <laughs> I will receive the legacy. They may be in. They may indeed be here in important business. It will be done, Lord Captain. Requesting permission to be present at the audience granted to my tech comrades. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, let's not bring her. Just Sam. Um, uh, we'll bring you because you're funny. <laughs> That's the only reason why we're bringing you because you're funny. Hopefully no fighting. A group dressed in crimsons of the priesthood of Mars walks towards you. Their gazes are fixed on Pascal. You note that the group is not monolithic. Some of its members are mostly heavily armed and follow a large tech priest clad in battle armor. Others keep a respectful distance and cast inquiring looks at their own leader, whose hunched posture bellies his tall frame. Despite the hood hiding his face, you recognize him as Opticon 22, whom you've encountered on football. The enormous tech priest points his hand at Pascal and lets out a booming roar, not unlike a factory alarm. It makes your very bones vibrate. Herald servo skulls marked with the emblem of the cog follow in his wake. They blare shrilly. Thou shalt not suffer heretic in thy forge, for rust begets rusts. Pascal Hanuman, in the name of the Adeptus Mechanicus, you are under arrest. Wait, what? Hunched servant of the Omnicide turns you. Diplomacy mode engaged. Announcement. The Adeptus Mechanicus offered their apologies for would like to inform you of the necessity of conducting an operation to detain, arrest, terminate a faulty unit on the rogue trader's territory. You identify the rare armor the enormous tech priest is wearing as a Secuta's plated mechanized suit. It carries the imprints of many battles and has markings that announce its status as a relic. Some of the armor's damage looks fairly severe to the point of endangering its operation. The slivers of flesh revealed under the steel are marked with terrible chemical burns, and every now and then the convulsions shake the tech priest's body, and a painful sounding hiss comes from his vox. The tall tech priest who spoke to you looks more peaceful and makes a point of not drawing his weapon. There is an air of concern about the way he frequently glances over at his fellow, scrutinizing his condition. Uh, glory to Adeptus Mechanicus, I'm ready to cooperate. Willingness to cooperate recorded. Mandate expanded. I request the right to conduct non-interference in the operation to detain, arrest, terminate the unit falsely identifying itself as Pascal Hanun. Wait, falsely? So he's not Pascal? This heretic is accused of stealing personal identification codes, spreading the tech heresy on the world of Kiaiba Gamma, and making an attempt on the life of the servant of the Omnisire. The deafening roar from the tech priest's box makes you grimace in pain. You touch your ear and notice blood on your fingers. The faulty unit will be removed. In the name of the Omnisire, I condemn you. Lightning flashes across the warrior's armor. Agony resounds in the blare of his vox alarm. In contrast, Pascal speaks quietly and coldly. You are malfunctioning, tech comrade. I deem your logical conclu conclusions questionable. 
The statement is false. Tech brother Tarzus Hanun Man is willingly undergoing holy torment, deterioration, which, however, does not affect, does not critically affect his cognitive capacity for data analyst unit calling itself Pascal Hanuman. We have information that implicates you, having learned that you are a member of the retinue and maintenance specialist in the service of rogue trader Bon Valantius. We have come here with the goal of meeting you, intercepting you, engaging you in combat. Do you have proof that this tech priest is who he claims to be? Confirmed. According to the archive entry 1E-99237, Magos Explorator Tarsus Hanuman served on, maintained the ship, identified, classified in the capacity of reliquary caretaker. He sustained extensive damage to both organic and sacred part of his body in a series of sacrilegious breaches of the right of operation and assassination attempt. Owing to a statistically fortunate coincidence by the Omnisire's grace, enough of his operational capacity was preserved for him to don a Goliath model sacred battle harness which would preserve his vital functions, functionality, archive entry, personal data sealed by the captain of the identifier classified. The sound from the tech priest's box is like a moan of a bending steel beam. A service girl declares, For vengeance! I thirst as I tread the path of vengeance, following the blasphemous miscreet bloody tracks analysts of security systems showed that the assassins heretics infiltrated the reliquary using tech brother Tarsus's unique identification code someone had stolen duplicated brother Tarsus's identity which is a grade three transgression and the unit making the allegedly criminal claim of being pascal hanneman is known to have previously used entered stolen code hmm what do you have to say? Wait, wait a minute. What's happening on Kaiava Gamma? The planet belongs to me. According to Vox interception data, the planet's fabricator sensor made incorrect blasphemous modifications to manufacturing and working procedures, which qualifies as lapse into sacrilege. The Adeptus and Mechanicus are hereby officially notifying House from Valantis of having commenced an investigation into operation to remove fabricator sensor Cubus Delphin estimate time to procedure complete. 3.7 solar years. Our data suggests that the unit which used Magos Explorator Hanneman's identification code performed an unauthorized upgrade on the planetary box array and introduced data deemed to be scrap code into the operation. This fact points to this unit's criminal complicity with the heretic Cubus Delphin. What do you have to say to this, Pascal? Pascal replies firmly, his box crackling with a hint of indi indignation. I deny these charges. I never plotted against my tech comrade. My cognitive purity vows were never distorted. My unique identification code was never stolen. I am the true Magos Explorator, Hanuman, and I am not guilty. The tech priest's deep guttural roar blends with the service girl's high-pitched whine. False witness! I am not handing Pascal over to you unless I see evidence. Let us get to the bottom of this matter together. Request approved. Ready to work in cooperation mode. Tarsus gives you a halty look and lets out a howl of wrath. Archive and tech brother Tarsus opposes lay participation in investigation search for truth. The unit Opticon 22 advises in favour of the House von Valantius representatives participation request. I insist on a joint investigation. Arresting a rogue trader's retinue member without any justification justification stands in breach of the law and my privilege under the warrant of trade. Request for cooperation reviewed and accepted. I request Tech Brother Tarzis consent to the co-participation co of representatives of the Von Valanti dynasty in the investigation proceedings. A sacrilegious conspiracy. I refuse to help the lace person. I am cog of the deuce mechanicus that grinds down corruption. I will carry out the sentence immediately. We were fighting then, regardless. Oh, wait, what? Pascal freezes, but a green spark lights up in his visor. He extends a hand towards Tarsus and replies in a clanging voice. Let the cycle be discontinued. 
You realize Pascal's words are coming from both his Vox and Tarsus's. Then every sensor on the executioner's battle harness lights up at once, blindingly, and the wounded, armored Leviathan lets out a deafening roar of pain. Attention! Priority notification. Service unit of the Capafred supply line are, un are unauthorized to front the rogue trader. Command retreat and reinitiate negotiations. <laughs> wow. I don't know what just happened I'll there. Make an example out oh, of you. so they all ran away because they don't want to fight their brothers. Got it. Got it. Uh, let's put... I want to put Pascal kind of up. You know. I'm also going to do this. Oh, maybe I should have done rear back. Oh, well, that's fine. Cogitation fails. The Omnissiah knows all, comprehends all. Do it. This just feels wrong. As the Emperor commands, the human emperor of the skill. Ha! Made them fall over. <laughs> the I was like, I made you fall over. Wondering if it would be better to. Yeah, let's do this. Doubt is for the weak. Oh! Henrix fell over as well. <laughs> Whoops. I never really had that move done on me. It's like he fell over. <laughs> On it. We'll do. Anything else? Good when they reverse the. Re don't, ex don't don't reverse the rolls. <laughs> it's as good as done. I'll see to it personally. Mm. 
contrary to dogmatic do protocols. I'll make it happen. Might as well try to shoot him. Pew! I'm a member. Okay. At your back and call. I'm not interested. Why? Come on. Now do it. Wait, 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 wait. Sweet. It will be done. We're just gonna hit him while he's down, you know? It's fine. At your back and call. It will be done. Alright. Hopeful. I'm so sorry. Wait. Is this one? Go again? Okay. Whatever. My vow is to serve. The scriptural prognosis is favorable. Request approval. Leave the court. Do not fight like this. Successful. You're fine. <laughs> Comprehend. Rejoice in battle! Faith without deeds is worthless. As the Emperor commands, I act. I'll do it. <laughs> I love how they fall over, it's great. <laughs> oh, I it's great. Here. Stay down. I'll put my oh, abilities to use. Yeah, it's fine. Of course, nine times out of ten, I never, I, I, I never really. So, sweet. Should get two of them, yeah. Be gone. Let's see to it. Yet iron knows no pain. Yeah. <laughs> Bless me. Wait, he he just went nuts and he's just attacking everyone around him. Kind of crazy and started attacking everyone around him. We'll do. Was was that you? Or <gasps> sorry, I Henry. Down, You're easy. fine though. I didn't even know he was there. He was being sneaky. I'm ready for whatever comes. I'll see to it personally. Now let's get back in the fight. I'll make it happen. On it. I'll make it happen. I will do my duty. Explorators know one route. Forward. Oh, can I not see him? 
I can see him. Okay. <laughs> Oh, that's right. They all got a second go. Okay, that's why I got confused. Okay. My frame organics require this. Request approved. Pew. My vow is to serve. I wonder if that changes though. I never thought actually. For the weak. Wow, you missed every single one of those. As the Emperor commands, I act. Faith Please don't miss. Deed is worthless. That's a little better. I'll do it. Guided by faith. As the Emperor commands, I act. Oh, right, there's a dude right in front of me, so yeah. Get me a target. Naturally, I'm done with this one, Amanda. Let's see to it. That's what's happening. But of course, Lord Captain. <laughs> but of course the fact that you tried to run away and then it was just destroyed will do I think I have to be close A minor setback. Um. Wait. I move up here. Next. Like, excuse me. It's as good as stuff. I'll do it. As the emperor commands, I act. Your lot. Get Let's him. See to it. Be gone. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> so they ran away, the big wimps. Requesting cessation of hostilities. Help your brother. The unit that called itself Tarsus Anima is dead. Has been disabled. This material asset is beyond restoration or reuse as spare parts. After pause, Pascal bows his head and Bin Halric Requiem pours out of his box. Despite his misconceptions, he was a servant of the Omnisire. Pascal, what did you do to Tarsus? Pascal's confused reply comes from his box in a rasp. Unable to fulfill requests, the Omnisire granted me the epiphany and I muted the maimed machine spirit that was filling Tarsus' mind with fury. I do not fully understand the manner of my appeal to it. The situation perfectly mirrors the incident on Rykad Minoris, where I appealed to the machine spirit of the malfunctioning mechanism and laid it to rest. I'm sorry that you had to kill your comrade. I also regret have negative assessment of this offense. The Adeptus Mechanicus still accused the unit identifying itself. It, I, but, but we'll start that one here. <clears throat> The Adeptus Mechanicus still accused the unit identifying itself as Pascal Hanneman of criminal theft of a unit identification code. Unlike Tech Brother Tarsus, I am not authorized to immediately arrest, execute the unit, but neither am I authorized to drop the inquiry. There are no apostates among us. 
The piercing voice from the Vox synth is more overwhelming than Taurus's thunderous roar. Tech brother Taurus's and the machine spirit that lived in his battle harness succumbed to the suffering that beset them. Their judgment was rash and erroneous. Now their torment is over. I declare them martyrs and I am requisitioning Taurus's autonomous neural augmented for the purpose of preserving his blessed memory. As astonished tech priests look on, Pascal leans over the slain man's body and extracts the augmentic from his skull. His movements are as precise as they are respectful. Whatever you just did, it's working. Keep it up. <laughs> With each word, Pascal's voice grows more powerful and majestic. You saw the agony your tech brother Tarsus was in. His unbridled pain spurred faith and intimidated you, yet you were silent. Reverence stopped you from raising your voices to proclaim that the machine spirit with which his mind had merged was morbidly afflicted. The imperative of reverence had paralyzed your will, and you watched a tragedy unfold in silence. The sixth universal law states that comprehension is the true path to knowledge, yet the procedural cycle has robbed you of your comprehension. Therefore, let the cycle be discontinued. There is a clang as Opticon 22's knees, knee presses into the floor. Crimson hooded head are bowed. Let the cycle be discontinued. The radiant light pouring out of Pascal's visor grows dimmer. Static creeps back into his voice. Let the cycle be discontinued, tech comrades. Pascal, there is one small point I'm not clear on. What the hell just happened? Pascal's vox synth crackles somewhat tentatively. I decided to sustain my words with an excerpt from one of the Blessed Amorat's sermons on loss of internal and external function versus... Is that four or six? I don't know Roman numerals very well. The analysis deemed it appropriate. What is the reason of this act of genfluection? It has been a long time since the words of the Messiah of this continuum were last spoken openly over public communication bands. We respectively welcome wisdom's return. So he is not forgotten after all. The Messiah of discontinuing, is that how you refer to Amranat? Following Archmago's Amranat's partial laicification, lay removal from the chain of command, that was the authorship attribution on a series of sermons on discontinuing the cycle that were disseminated across the cognizant fleet. It was, in fact, a title used by many in past time in times past. Is Amnarat's teachings not heretical? This statement is false. Contrary to what many servants of the Omnissiah thought they knew, preferred to believe, the fleet's supreme conclave never formulated, issued an official statement on that decision. 37% of the Supreme Conclave members openly supported Archmago's Armnat's views and disappeared were removed from the chain of command. Under circumstances that were classified, the Supreme Conclave has not had the quorum ever since. Do you know where Armnat is now? Data unavailable. No report that mentioned Archmago's Armnat since the incident on the Arc Mechanicus Hermetico, which led to the presumed destruction and disappearance of that void ship. My archive has no data on the Hermetico incident. The vessel was the Blessed Armnat's base of operations. Is it lost then? Pascal's voice is filled with anxiety. Were you among his followers? Negative. I had no contact with Archmagos' Armnat and was never a member of his flock, disciples, retinue. However, my analysis of the doctrine he outlined inspired in me deep respect for trust in him. I presume the conflict between him and Pascal has been resolved. The data received provides a basis for calling the fallen tech brother Tarsus's hypothesis into question. Out of respect for, due to lack of authorization to indict, the followers of the Messiah of Discontinue will, we will not proceed with the detainment arrest termination. On the side knows all, comprehends all. Thank you, Tech Brother of the Con 22. Now that conflict has been resolved, you may remain aboard my ship. Request denied. The Kappa Fred supply line delegation is leaving Dargonus, expresses gratitude for the hospitality ceasefire and proclaims its intent to return to footfall to resume performing its regular function. The tech priest looks over at Pascal as if waiting for something. Pascal's Mecha Andre briefly touches the shoulder of Opticon 22. 
who bows respectfully. <sighs> well, that could have went awful. That could have went absolutely freaking terrible. They level up. Didn't we just like level these guys up? Like that could have went awful. But I do Is there feel money to be made? That back to the void ship, Rachel. 